I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will learn a strategy to solve questions involving permutations and factorials. The question is to solve for n. We have two parts. First one np2 equals to 56 and then we have np3 equals to 5 factorial. We have to find the value of n. We know general formula for npr is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial, correct? So we can use this formula to solve these equations. So the first one here will be n factorial divided by n minus 2 factorial is equal to 56 and that gives us n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial divided by n minus 2 factorial equals to 56 n minus 2 factorial cancels out so we are left with n times n minus 1 equals to 56 from here this is a quadratic equation which can be solved and we can find the value of n correct so you can actually pause the video solve this and find n let's look into the second one which gives us np3 equals to 5 factorial, right? So I'll continue with this. So that really means we have n factorial over n minus 3 factorial equals to 5 factorial, correct? Now that means n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 factorial divided by n minus 3 factorial equals to 5 factorial which is, uh, let's say, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay. Now, this and this cancels. What really remains with us is a cubic equation. n minus 1 times n minus 2 equals to this number, which is 5 times 4 is 20, times 6 is 120, right? So, that is what you get, and you get a cubic equation. Right. If I do NP4 and something else, you will get a quartic equation. Remember that. So, so what really happens is that the R value in such questions may complicate your solution depending on what the R is. If R is 5, you will get degree 5 equation here to solve, maybe in factored form. Now, the question is, how can I solve these equations quickly, right? I have to find the value of n. What I need to find is the value of n. This is what I need to find. How can I solve them quickly? Now, the trick here is we could always solve them, right? Open the bracket, use quadratic formula, factor out. You know, it's a long process. How do we do it quickly? This is what I'm going to tell you in the next step. Here it seems to be simple, 7 times 8, right? You have your answer right there. Bigger number you're looking for, correct? Uh, and here then what? Correct? So what I do here is, if I have 2 here, we'll do square root of 56. So what we will do here is, I'm just discussing the trick here now. Trick is, if this is 2, then we do 56 square root. What do we get? Let's see. So, so we have 56 and uh, we, I'm sorry, we do square root of 56 and we get in decimals 7.4. So we know these two numbers are around 7.4. So what are the possible numbers? Obviously it is 8 times 7, 56, correct? And so we get our answer and that is n should be 8, right? n should be 8. So we say that means n equals to 8. Does make sense to you? So what we have shown here is without really solving the question, we estimated the square root, right? You could estimate, right? You know, 7 times 7 is 49. We know 7 square is 49. And we know 8 square is 64. Like if calculators are not allowed, then this number is in between these two. And therefore, we get our answer. You get my point, correct? Now, we'll follow the same method here. So what I'm trying to do now here is, we'll find the cube root of 120. 
and round it to a whole number. Do you see that? So we have 120 to the power of, let's say, 1 divided by 3. So that gives me the cube root, right? So cube root of 120 is 4.9 approximately. 4.9 is the cube root. That means the center value is 4.9, correct? Cube root, if you multiply three numbers, is somewhere in between. Do you understand? So the cube root is, is approximately 5. Therefore, what the number should be? Well, in that case, the center number is 5. These numbers should be 6 and 4. And therefore, we get our answer as 6. And what you can do is, you can perform a check. So what is the check? 6 times 5 times 4 equals to what? Let's do it. Now, I know you could do it without calculator. But, you know, uh, at times, you could be working with degree 4 or 5 equations, right? You get the same answer, 120. And therefore, we can say n is equals to 6. Do you see that? So what I'm trying to emphasize here, that if you have multiple choice questions, restricted time, and in general, you could do nth root, I should say rth root, to get an answer in such a situation. I hope you understand and appreciate this trick. That will really save time when really required. Feel free to share my trick and my videos. If you like, that will be great. Thank you and all the best.